whatever comes, we'll face it together. Let's go. Alien Romulus is the newest entry into the Alien franchise. It's directed by Fetty Alvarez. And Fetty Alvarez, of course, gave us the Evil Dead 2013 entry. And I absolutely love that film. It did so much to sort of a slapstick horror franchise. It gave it gore that you hadn't seen before in that franchise. It gave it an incredible story, a believable story, where the characters were at the cabin for a certain reason. While I liked the newest entry into Evil Dead, I felt like it was coincidence, the movie, but the Evil Dead 2013 really gave you a believable storyline on top of some incredible horror, and it's one of my favorite horror films of all time. I just love that movie. So when I heard that Fetty Alvarez was given the keys to the alien kingdom, well, it had my curiosity. And then I found out that it was being placed between alien and aliens, and I thought, well, that's a very interesting concept. So it had my full attention, so much so in fact that I made Alien Romulus my number four most anticipated movie of 2024 and I'm so glad I did because I had an absolute blast with this film. Let's talk about Alien Romulus. So like I said this movie takes place between the events of Alien and Aliens, two of my favorite entries into the entire Alien franchise and what I loved about this film is not only did it provide a lot of connective tissue, a bridge in fact to those two films, but it also connects to other entries of the Alien franchise. We'll talk about the those in my positives in a little bit. So getting into the synopsis of this film, the movie opens with a young group of space colonizers who clearly have been brought there as children. They were brought there by their parents, or maybe they were even born there, but they've slowly over time watched all of their parents perish on this planet because it's a very dangerous environment. Not only are they in space, but you're in a place where they dig into these mines and so slowly they have died on this planet. And they're all pretty sick of living there. They wanna leave this planet and go away. The problem is, the very evil Wayland Corporation owns this planet and owns pretty much everybody in there. And you have to serve a certain amount of time in order to be able to leave. So one day they find out that there is this abandoned space station of some sort hovering above the planet and nobody seems to be talking about it and they think well you know we could get up there and get some of the energy out of the batteries of that ship to actually power our own and shoot ourselves to another planet and get away from the Whalen Corporation. So the five or six of them embark on this journey. They fly up into space above the planet where this space station is just floating in space for seemingly no reason. They get in there and of course you know that's when facehuggers are going to start and so much alien carnage. And that's pretty much where I have to stop my synopsis right there because I feel like if I go any further I'll start to spoil stuff because yes you have seen the face huggers in the trailer you've seen the alien in the trailer but I do not want to go into any specifics from here on out because it does get very spoiler filled really the minute they step onto that ship. But with that said I've got positives and I've got negatives Let's get into them. My first positive for this film is not going to be anything that other reviewers aren't talking about, but it is the visuals in this movie. Yes, you've got the different visuals on the ships. You've got the visuals on the planet. I think they do a great job with that, but I personally give a movie extra points anytime it shows me the absolute horror and beauty of space. I love watching space on the big screen, and this movie gives it to you so much and so beautifully. My only regret from seeing the showing that I saw the other night is that I didn't see this movie in IMAX and that is something I look to correct over the next couple days and watching this film one more time because I hear in IMAX it's even more gorgeous but it really is beautiful to see space in this film they're dealing with events right above the planet and the planet has these gigantic rings around it and those look so beautiful in this movie and also so horrifying in this movie so it's great because the visuals lead you to these beautiful scenes and these horrifying scenes and we're not even talking about the gigantic perfect life form alien that is also horrifying in this movie. And since we're talking about the alien visuals in this movie, let's talk about the xenomorph and the incredible carnage that the xenomorph brings 
in this movie. Without going into spoilers, some of the stuff they do with this, this monster in this film is so much fun. It goes back to those roots of the original Alien film where this thing is hunting them, it's tracking them down, it's smart, it doesn't just go after people for the sake of going after them, it's calculated, it waits at certain points of the movie for someone to get from A to B because maybe when they get to B they'll open a certain door and then the alien has access to the next part of the ship. This xenomorph in this movie really proves in this film that it is the ultimate life form because this thing shows that it's the ultimate hunter in this movie along with some incredible carnage candy. And if we're talking about the xenomorph and how terrifying they looked in this film, we got to talk about the face huggers. And I've got the AMC face hugger bucket, which honestly I wasn't super excited about before the film. Like before I got there, I was like, ah, oh, the AMC just got kind of lazy, but there's some serious detail on this thing. And maybe we'll look at it after I'm done with this review in this video. But the face huggers in this film for the first time, in my opinion, are absolutely terrifying. I've always thought the face huggers were a fun addition to the alien franchise. Although the xenomorph is usually the money shot, I feel like it's almost opposite in this film. The, the face huggers are terrifying. Yeah, you've seen movies where there's one or two face huggers. How about hundreds of these things all trying to make their way onto your face, shoving that tube down your throat. And the movie is so graphic when it comes to watching these things things and how ugly and terrifying that they truly are and how menacing they are loved every bit of it. I also go into a little bit of lore with these things that I don't feel like there's ever been covered in the Alien franchise and that the face huggers can't see so they're reading your body heat as you go from room to room and they do something with that in the film and I thought that was really cool. They really brought the face huggers from just being the thing that implants the xenomorph in your chest to being a monster themselves and something that's very terrifying and could be anywhere in this movie. I love that. Next positive, the score in this film is beautiful. You have different scores from different alien films that they play in this movie. And without spoiling them anything, there's a certain moment in here where I was like, oh my God, it's that piece of music from that movie. And that was really cool. It's crazy when a piece of music for a film feels like a spoiler. Like it's just a crazy experience in the theater. I was sitting there watching this thing. And I was like, how am I going to talk about this? If I talk about this, it's going to spoil it. So I will just say that that the score in this movie also is wonderful. It, it's beautiful at times, and it's also just, it helps tie the franchise together with itself. And they did a great job with the score of this movie. Which leads me to my final positive, which we sort of touched on a second ago, and that is how this movie ties everything together. Like I said, they tie things together with the score of this film, but they also just find a way to bring in the lore from previous Alien franchise films that you, I, going into this movie, we didn't know what to expect. We were like, okay, Ridley Scott gave us Prometheus, Alien Covenant, we've got Alien originally, then we got Alien, so what are we going to get here? This movie takes place between these two, so is it just going to bridge the gap between Alien and aliens or is it going to encompass as much of the franchise as it can and i'm here to tell you that it encompasses as much of the franchise as it can and i love that about this movie i love that there are elements of those other movies now that i can't wait to go watch again because i know what's going to happen with those elements in alien romulus so there were some incredible things they were able to do with this movie that really tied a franchise together and i go back to saw x last year where saw x dropped and we were like holy shit it they, if they are able to continue doing this where they drop entries between different established movies in this franchise i'm here for it and i'm here to say i feel the same way about alien romulus if they drop more entries into the alien franchise like this where it's in between entries of previous films i think we were in for something very special but that's the end of my positives. We do have to get into some negatives. And while I loved this film, there are some negatives that I have for it. And the first one has to do with fan service. Now, it's not fan service in general, because as a fan, I absolutely love fan service in films, especially when you're dealing with a franchise film. And so you've got all these different elements and movies you can pick from and kind of show stuff and head nods to. I had no problem with that. But there's some moments in this film that feel a little forced, and that's where my negative comes from. One in particular, there's a character that says a line to one of the xenomorphs in this movie, and when they say it in the movie, I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. Then when I think about it the next day, I'm like, wait a minute. That kind of takes away from something that hasn't yet happened in this film, and that was a problem for me. Like, thinking about it the last 48 hours since I saw this film, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I just feel like that line kind of, is taken from somebody later in the franchise that hasn't happened yet 
and I don't really appreciate that. If you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. It is a fun moment in the movie, but when you think about it afterwards, you're just kind of like, eh, I kind of wish they hadn't said that line. That's kind of one character's very famous line later. And if you haven't seen this movie yet, you might already know if you're a fan of the Alien franchise. This is me trying not to spoil things, but also trying to tell you why the fan service feels forced sometimes. And that'll lead me to my final negative of this film, which is going to be a bit divisive. And it's already almost divisive within myself because part of me really didn't like some of the choices they made in the last 10 to 15 minutes of this movie. But as this movie has sat with me for the last 48 hours, part of me understands why they made those choices. So it's already a divisive negative to me but I know it's going to be to other people because I know other reviewers have been like oh the way they ended this movie was brilliant I love it and that's okay because everybody has a different opinion on film but for me in this film when you come down to the last 10 to 15 minutes it did start to lose me I loved the first we'll say 80 to 85 percent of this movie it really is one of my favorite movies of the year but those last 10, 15 minutes of this movie really changed the course of this film and didn't make me love it as much as I wanted to because this movie did something towards the end that was like, would have been, in my opinion, would have been a perfect bridge between Alien and Aliens. Would have been a perfect bridge. When I walked out of that movie, had they gone with that, I'd have been so satisfied. I'd been like, that's the answers I needed to get into Aliens. I love it, no notes. But they did decide to sort of hold back on that final bridge to Aliens, and it feels a bit like studio interference. And I'm not saying it was, maybe that's where the director wanted to go, the writers wanted to go, maybe that's what they wanted to do, but it feels like they left just enough open to be able to drop another entry in the franchise after Romulus, before Aliens, to be like, oh, we can make a little more money out of this. And that was disappointing, because again, they do something toward the end, We'll just say a ship is on autopilot, and I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. Perfect. Okay, let's go watch Aliens. And then they're like, ah, we're going to make some choices. And some character choices they make, some monster choices that they make, and I didn't love those things. So this isn't like I hated it in any way, but I was disappointed by those last 10, 15 minutes. They do some things in those last 10, 15 minutes where I was like, the visuals were great, but it's just not what I want. I wanted... You know, just that bridge. I just wanted, you put this movie between two iconic movies, just bridge the gap perfectly and we'll be good. And I feel like they almost got there and it just fell short. But that's not to say that my negatives hold this movie back in any way. This is still one of my favorite movies of the year. Not my favorite of the year. Had they corrected that ending, maybe a little better. And hey, you know what? In the future, if they do drop another entry into the Alien franchise, maybe Fetty comes back, does another one of these, and they do drop another one between Alien Romulus and Aliens, maybe my negatives will go away here and I'll be like okay it made sense it's perfect love what they did they've now connected it to aliens I just feel like they left that open for the ability to drop another movie there and I didn't need that this was a great connection piece until that moment but that's just how I feel you could also look at that scene and go well it does lead to other themes in the franchise that happened before so it's not necessarily the worst thing that's happened and I'm not saying it is the worst thing it's just a choice that I didn't necessarily love on my first viewing. Maybe I'll change my mind in the future. But overall, guys, I had an absolute blast with Alien Romulus. It is one of my favorite movies of 2024. I would highly recommend it to any of you to go check out. It's got some great character work in it. It's got some great story in it. A connective tissue to other films is almost unmatched to other franchises. I think Fetty Alvarez has an absolute hit on his hand here. I'm looking forward to watching this one again, and maybe my thoughts on the end of the film will change over time, sort of like Prometheus. I didn't love what they did with Prometheus right away, but over the years, it's a movie that I absolutely love watching once a year, and I love everything about that film. So maybe in the moment when you're expecting one thing and you get something else, you don't love it as much, but I, I will say, I had a great time with Alien Romulus. Highly recommend you guys go check it out, especially if you like space on the big screen like me. You gotta check this one out. It's just beautiful to look at. But those are just my opinions because that's my review for Alien Romulus. Guys, have you seen this movie yet? If you have, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts, where you're at with this movie. Maybe it's one of your favorite of the year. Maybe some of my positives or negatives we agree or disagree on. I would love to hear from you guys. Love talking to you guys in the comments. It always means a lot to me, guys, when you watch this video and you comment down below. Finally, if you like this video and you want to watch more, don't forget to hit that like button because it helps the video, it helps the channel, and it helps me right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.
All right, guys, we got to the end of my Alien Romulus review, and I appreciate you guys sticking around this long. Let's talk about the Alien popcorn bucket that I got. This thing is cool. It's the AMC popcorn bucket. And while I did want the Cinemark Alien Xenomorph head, unfortunately, it was sold out everywhere near me. But my buddy Alex Labo was able to snag one of these for me. And I love how its legs you know, crawl around the bucket. That's really gross, but also awesome. It's got a picture of the Xenomorph on this side. The only other popcorn bucket that I really wish I could have gotten my hands on was the Regal bucket. That bucket was the same idea, same concept, but it lit up and then the Xenomorph was like glowing and I thought that was so cool. But those also sold out around me. I had no ability to go get that. Overall though, guys, I love that I have this popcorn bucket. It is really cool. With all that said, if you like this review and you want to check out other content on my channel, well, I've got all of my 2023 movie reviews right there and I've got all of my 2024 movie reviews right there.